Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to Nowhere Prophet, where we have learned some things. It's really... I find it comforting to know that we'll be able to tell when we have the opportunity to attempt the bunker event from the, um, from the area selection map, so you know way ahead of time. And we now know approximately how it works. My guess is that what we're actually seeing there is that every time we clicked the Delve Deeper button, there was a chance that we would get whatever it was, was we needed to happen to unlock the breaker. And it's just, they let you try it over and over again at an escalating hope cost. So we probably could have gotten lucky and gotten it on the first or second try. We didn't, obviously. Um, but now we know for the future. I bet, I bet we will be able to unlock this. I bet this won't be a big deal at all. So, now we have to consider. We're in pretty rough shape in terms of um, people's health. I'd really like to go for the Buried Skyship, I just don't know if we'll survive the detour, because we have to go back through a combat node. Um, and as much as I'm a big fan of, of taking on combats and getting, uh, getting XP, we're in pretty dire shape right now. So I think we have to skip it, we have to just go forward. I don't like the fact that there's no healing on the way and that there's an unavoidable combat node, uh, but what are we going to do about it, right? So let's... um. Let's use some sweets. I think we really need the healing from the tea, and there's no way to guarantee that we'll get in a fight before we need to use another luxury. There's a chance that we will simply overwrite the sweets effect rather than getting to use it, and because of that, I want it to be the sweets effect and not the tea effect. And we shall continue forward. Uh, I was wondering if we could spare some extra rations tonight. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. We are in a position to trade food for hope. Let's all have a big wasteland party. Okay, we do get to use the home effect. So, how many charges of this do you have? Two? Okay. We're in a situation here where we can't we can't run a, enough of a deck without running wounded people, right? Also, did they change... Is the representation of the art behind the text larger than it used to be? Is there a patch maybe overnight? Huh, I don't know. Whatever. Um... Yeah, we're in a situation here where we can't run enough of a deck without running wounded people. So who are the who are the people we want to run? We, we're trying to achieve here the maximum benefit of uh, the... What are the words I want? We're trying to maximize our effectiveness while minimizing the value of the cards we might lose. Mendicant is probably pretty good here. I think we should probably play one or two more cards. Um... So what, is our, what does our curve look like right now? It's not too likely that we'll have something we can play on the first turn, as it stands now. So like this would probably be a good time to just like run raiders and stuff. And maybe a crash jacker? Let's run a crash jacker too. Yeah, we're gonna start we're gonna start bleeding people here, which is the way that you lose the game slowly. So I'm not too happy about it. I think Union Sapper is a fantastic early... Where did my mouse cursor just go? What is happening right now? Okay. I've been having some weird equipment issues uh, the last day or two. Some technical stuff. So when I click on Union Sapper, my mouse cursor turns into a little red hexagon. <laughs> what is happening? Uh... Hmm... Can I, okay, can I do this, and then, yeah, that's very strange. Okay, live troubleshooting. Does the, oh, the game thinks I have a controller attached? I don't, my Steam controller's not even plugged in. No, do not unturn. Uh, we're gonna Alt F4 the game real quick and just relaunch it. I don't know what is going on. I've been. I haven't recorded today's Total War Warhammer yet because it won't run. Uh, so I might be experiencing some serious hardware failure that I'm going to have to uh, maybe spend some money to fix. Is my concern. We'll see if reloading into the game allows us to. I'm not sure where this is going to put us. Okay, right back there. And nope, still a problem. Okay, well, let's. You know what? I'm just going to cut the recording here and restart some things, and let's see if we can fix this. 
Okay, well, I have tried everything I can think of, and I have figured out a way to actually make it work, or to make it playable, but nothing will make my mouse work during this combat. So, we're gonna try to... The thing is, I can kind of do this with my controller, but it's... The normal controller controls don't work either. I have to play it as though it, I don't have access to a cursor at all. So we're just gonna have to try to make that work, apparently. So I can do this with the thumbstick. I can't use the the mousing surface on my control. I don't know what the hell's going on with this thing. We're just gonna try to get through it somehow. So how do I and turn? No, that's not it. Uh, there we go. Uh, yeah, I'm, ha I'm having to improvise a weird half keyboard, half controller uh, operation method here. This is not the way I want to be playing this. This is a, a controller is not the appropriate way to play video games broadly all right yeah we'll black this guy out because that's going to be a problem and then how do we want to handle this because we have the option certainly of just crashing our three four into that guy and killing him if we do that we run a significant risk of that three four becoming wounded and we really 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 can't afford to take a bunch more wounds uh we could... Okay, I guess we can play Stone Chakra and then play Mendicant uh, near it, and... Boy, there's not actually a way for me to do that either, is there? I, like, we can play Stone Chakra here or here and play the Mendicant. But, like, anything we do is going to block the 3-4 anyway. I guess that's fine. That's the situation we're in. Uh, so let's let's get the stone chakra established, and we'll just have to move the the three two out and put her somewhere else later. It's not exactly the way I want to be doing things, but it is going to have to work. And then this sucks. This is a terrible way to have to. How do I even mm. enter? If I press enter on the keyboard, it ends the turn, and that's the only way I can find to make that work. I don't know what the heck is happening with this thing. I um. I did do the basic, you know, like, I, I checked the Discord, I checked the Steam forums. It doesn't seem like this is a bug that other people are experiencing, which makes me think it's probably not the game, it's probably my equipment, but, like, what could possibly even cause this? Okay, very strange sequence of plays from our opponent there. Uh, well, I think it's pretty obvious that we want to shoot the sniper. And then that leaves us with three. So let's... We eat a guy with the 3-5. We move the 3-2 down to behind the 0-1 rock. And then we just play, like, Crash Jacker to get some power on the board. And that's probably right. And they're gonna kill our Mendicant. That's gonna happen. But don't, we don't really have a ton of options on that one. We could play something behind this just to benefit from its effect and then it it's fine it's too much moving people around to do it that way and then uh, do i want to scrap something here i'm gonna scrap the secure i think we're very unlikely to need it and i do need to find the okay like that the other more relevant cards in our deck so they're gonna be able to trade Ah, oh, it's not even a trade. They're, they're going to be able to trade one for one now. Oh, they're going to be... Well, I guess... This is pretty bad. Yep, get your guy up to five power and also give him barrier. Definitely a, uh, a reasonable card for you to have access to. Obviously, we're taking the shot. Okay. So how do we want to manage this nonsense? The, the incredible bullshit situation we've been put in now. Uh, I think I don't want to play the Savant. As good as the Savant is here, we just need to... Um, we need to play Shot. Have to. But yeah, we're gonna... Our convoy is going to start... Is going to slowly bleed to death now, because we're actually losing people. Um, so we gotta figure out a solution to that, like, real, real quick. You need to punch an opening over here. And then, do we black out that 4-1? Because 
Because they're going to play another... I'm sure they have whatever it is they need to kill our guy. We can at least make it cost one more card. Right, like, it, they're probably going to have another one of those plus two plus O's, or they'll have a slice or something. If we drop that guy back to 2-1, though, it becomes considerably harder for them to pull this off. I think that's the move. Or if I... What is it? God, I hate... Hate, hate, hate. No, I just want to... Um, there we go. Stoic until the start of your next turn. So I guess our plan could be to just scrap something and let him potentially get traded out or something, but, like, not lose a follower. Because I really... I'm a little leery of spending the Blackout Strike, obviously. All right, and then we're going to throw a bolster on you in an attempt to make you survive the combat. And the mouse was totally working as a control method up until the battle started, so I'm hoping that once this battle ends, things will go back to normal. Makes me a little nervous that they're throwing guys away. I assume that means they have a, a way to actually kill him. Okay, no, nope, it just, just felt like throwing guys away for no reason. Definitely interesting. Okay, um... What do we want to do here? So, we could scrap a card to give our guy Stoic, and then trade him for something. A 2-2, whatever. And then play Scavenger Savant in front of the, the thing and make him a 6-8. That doesn't actually solve too many of our problems, though. We're almost lethal. We're getting we're getting close. Because next turn we could play we could play some something huge and refresh it. I mean, right now we could play ca Crash Jacker, refresh it, and go to the opponent's face for twelve. It's just not quite there. The other thing we could do is do a scrap, make that guy immune until the start of our next turn, and then just um, just move him down or something so that we can get the benefit of the of the stone thing without having to. I mean, but in that case, all I'm doing is letting them pick which creature he trades for, which is probably not ideal. All right, let's start with the scrap. We're do we're totally doing the scrap, so it's. It's definitely not Refresh. Porcupine Prana is actually pretty... I think it's this. Oh. Boy, I don't want to take a wound on my... Um, on my Union Sapper, but we might have to Mind Seize. That does get us out of this situation. We have one guy who won't actually be injured by it at all. We just play Mind Seize and then play, like, Crash Jacker. It's not bad. Like, go to the opponent's face. Boy, I do not like... Do not like the taking a wound part here. But I think if we don't do this, we're going to find that we end up suffering a lot more in the long run. Boy, well, that animation could maybe like play on all of the targets at the same time, right? Doesn't that doesn't that seem to be the case? I will throw down a crash jacker who is not exactly lethal, but with refresh makes almost anything lethal. And we just hope that our opponent doesn't have any removal spells or taunts. Okay, it's looking pretty good for us here. Okay, so we win. Who wants a blessing? I'm gonna put it on this Union Sapper, I think. We'll just play you. Refresh you. Wait. Did I math it bad? Yeah, I'm playing like the Union Sapper already has the bonus damage. Oh my god. Well, we're just gonna have to take the blessing on the Crash Jacker then. I do that sometimes. I find myself um, going, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to get that blessing. She's going to have three power. That'll be great. 
and then start actually executing the plan as though she already has the three power, as though the thing I'm planning to do has already occurred. Okay, so uh, really extremely bad. We we extre we cannot afford to take any more losses. Or oh, this sucks. Can I please mouse again? Nope. Let me try. I mean, I've already tried everything. But let me try some things a second time. Nope. Okay, we're just gonna play the rest of this with a normal controller setup instead of a Steam controller setup. Man, bad. What a what a bad way to have to do. Th oh, okay. A healer's kit is definitely a compelling item. Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna we're gonna. Um, how do I make it? Damn it. There we go. Let's trade out one of the maces for this. Healing Touch makes Resilience Chant so much better. Immediately. What do we need? 15 batteries? Okay. We're close. We're close on that. Actually, we might even have it here. I think we have Chunk. How do I... Okay. I hate how much of this is just like, press some triggers and some bumpers until it does whatever you want. There's no on-screen indication that that's how you access this stuff. It's just, you know, what else would it be? So a higher quality of space plate that has two copies of scrap projectiles on it. That's, that's good, but what would I have to... If, uh, if I unequip my current space plate... This, can I just... Yeah, here we go. What would it sell for? What's the, what's the trade-off here? Eleven. So... We'd lose 18 batteries for this. I don't think we can afford that. Things are a little tight battery-wise right now because I absolutely do want to go ahead and level up at this moment. Flint Heart Sign reju oh, rejuvenates cool. Uh, hmm. Heal 6 and is pulled versus Armored Blow. I really do feel like we're a little bit re removal light, and especially uh, we're light on removal that does damage greater than two, which Armored Blow will sometimes, sometimes do. Um, I like a cheap pull. I think I'm going to take the Armored Blow, because being able to kill the enemy, uh, enemy cards is pretty important. We're just going to... Nope, that's... Why did pressing right from here take me to edit deck? You know what the problem is? I'm using a stick instead of a D-pad, so that might have read as a downright. Man, analog control is, is the wrong control method for <laughs> menus. Does the D-pad on this thing... Okay, the D-pad on this thing does work. It's a little D-pad on the uh, Steam controller. It's a little non-ideal. You don't really want to be using it as a D-pad. It is a, it is basically a touchpad. Okay, I think that's all the stuff we want to do here. I don't, I don't want to buy anything, right? I'm kind of looking at this T. To be per <laughs> to be perfectly honest with you, I'm so desperate on health, but we already have two things of T. One of which we're going to use right now. Yeah, it's definitely a dire situation. Because we got to do this, and then who knows how many other fights we're going to have before we get to the boss fight, where we are just like, we are not ready. We need healing very badly. All right. So, if we run the deck the way it's set up now, we're going to lose a Union Sapper for sure. It's like, cheap cards die, you know? Whoever Whoever's on the low end of your deck is going to die in combat. Because they eat all of the initial removal spells. Let's pull in a Vandal. We had another Vandal? Devoted Guard is unlikely to survive, but it's kind of a... He's distracting, he's kind of a low-value card on the whole, so I feel less bad with him dying than I do <laughs> with some of the others. But yeah, this is this is very bad. A, str a strategy where you're just like, yeah, some of your guys are going to die holds up until you run out of guys and not a moment longer, right? 
A friendly unit is healed, deal one damage to Jesus. Okay, well that's bad. Hopefully he forgot to bring his healing cards. You know, we can dream. Uh, obviously I don't want to start with you, and I think I'm not going to start with Steam Shot either. Alright, pretty sure we want to just open Union Sapper, although there's definitely something to be said for going like Devoted Guard with a bolster on him. 4-3 Taunt is an okay first turn play. Let's do this for right now. Okay, everybody's got drones and drones and drones. Yep, no, that's cool. You're just gonna <laughs> this is gonna play eight power worth of guys on the first turn. Why wouldn't that be the way that goes? Well, the resilience chance the chant is definitely cool though. The resilience chant lets us get some stuff done here. So I'm gonna kill you. We're gonna play resilience chant behind a rock. We're going to restore, which also refreshes, and that doesn't even strain. Man, what a good, what a good card. So we'll do one of these. And then I'm going to use my healer's touch. And then we'll attack again. Just undo a bunch of your work here and also get enough armor that I feel reasonably confident my leader won't take any damage this fight. And then I think I'm just going to play bolster and pass as much as I want to resolve another uh, thing. If I don't play bolster, there's no chance we get out of this without just like losing a guy. Okay. At least we have a... No, we don't. Never mind. At least we have a chance. I keep forgetting about that, about this ability. I'm still not sure that it would have been right to play one of the uh, one of the higher cost guys. Although obviously the two two first strike makes several of the guys in our hand very bad, like to the point where I don't think we actually have a choice of not doing this. And then. Could just play the five six i mean if we had one more energy right this guy gets so much better i think i'm just gonna stick the five six for right now right because he's pretty good with the with the barrier thing and they're gonna have to actually have a removal spell to trade their guys for him some kind of damage thing or fortify yeah Sure, so now they trade the 2-1 for the barrier, and then... Man, that Fortify card didn't exist before, right? Every one of our enemies having multiple copies of it now seems a little... I think that card is probably better than it should... Like, I don't... That card's not balanced very well, I don't think. I think I'd rather have this than the bolster in the situation we find ourselves in. And then we're absolutely just gonna scrap this. Okay, shot's good. Shot's what we're looking for. So, am I playing Veteran Gladiator followed by Shot? Now, if I do that, the Veteran Gladiator's just dead. If I play Phalanx, they're gonna kill it, but at least it costs them a bunch of cards. <sighs> Man. We could play... We could play Devoted Guard, then restore it to 3-3, which will refresh it, have it eat the 2-1, and then restore it, or we could stim shot it, and have it kill the 3-1, the and then shoot the 5-2, and that clears the table. And it probably leaves me in a better position than it leaves him because he is... His his individual creatures are a lot worse than ours are. Like, we're going to have Phalanx and Veteran Gladiator in upcoming turns, and he's going to have, like, two ones. Yeah. 
loss of a guy is real bad for our long-term prospects, but we are out of other options. Okay, so restore. Eat you. Stim shot. Eat somebody, it doesn't actually matter who, and then shoot the other one. It's a shame we don't have one more energy so that we could also end this with a guy, but what are you going to do? Okay, that's when he plays his dozer. <laughs> that's when he, you know, he just plays four creatures without spending any cards from his convoy deck. No big deal. Uh, interesting. So, Stone Chakra gives us some... Some new, interesting possibilities. I think I just play... Phalanx here? Boy. Yeah, our opponent always always being able to just play six power worth of drones for three uh, for three energy is tough. That's tough to beat. Phalanx to prepare for a bigger turn next turn doesn't feel all that great. If we played the Stone Chakra followed by the Scrap Artist followed by the Raider. That gives us a 3-6 Scrap Artist. We don't want to play the Raider away from the Stone Chakra, probably. 3-6, so he'd have to spend two of the drones killing it, plus attack it with the... Uh... Actually, we probably want to play the Raider next to the Stone Chakra. Because otherwise, he can kill it, too. Yeah, that... That sucks, but... It gives us the best chance of having something actually survive. And then, I mean, I sort of want to scrap for the... Um, to give that guy stoic, but also I really like the cards I'm looking at here. Alright, I'm gonna scrap the veteran gladiator. That guy is less relevant. I think the 7 7 is gonna matter a lot, but, it, you know, obviously we need our opponent to um, run out of cards, which he's never ever going to do. Okay, that's not a very good worker swarm. Interesting. I assumed he was just going to ram the 4-7 into that. But yeah, him having him having an extra point of power there is pretty bad for us, obviously. And then... Scavenger Savant shows up. Which is definitely... Nope, that's not what I want. Uh, here we go. So we only have about even odds of pulling a card that is cheaper than three by cycling Porcupine Prana. I think the uh, trading armor for damage effect of Porcupine Prana obviously is fairly relevant here. Uh, I think we're just gonna we're gonna play Big Phalanx. And then am I going to scrap the Prana? I kind of want it. But I also would really like to play another card. I don't think I can. Well, I figured out how to how to hit end turn on the controller now, at least. Although, again, it's this is a thing where you just would have to guess that that's what the bumper is going to do. There's no on-screen indication. And I feel like we've never had an opportunity to have that card that draws you a guy and makes it cheaper. That card's in completely insane. Also, this thing, the barrier generator, is, like, not fair. <laughs> okay, uh, Crash Janeer is kind of interesting. Deal one damage to a random enemy target eight times and then set my armor to five. So it could potentially break a bunch of barriers. Yeah, that's definitely compelling. 
what we could do here is just go to the opponent's face with our 6-8, play Crash Jr., and then make him have to actually kill stuff. The problem is he's he's created so many creatures that there's no way to keep him from killing things. He, because he plays somewhere between 8 and 10 power worth of guys every turn. Uh, we, like, I just... I can't stay safe. Let's do this and see what happens. Okay. That almost couldn't have gone better. That was pretty good. Uh, and then I think... We had to eat the 4-3 in order to have any chance of keeping our guys alive. But this puts a tremendous amount of... Like, we have a tremendous amount of damage on the table. Uh, factoring in the refresh. It's really a lot. I think I'm going to... Scrap the Gorilla Fighter, maybe? No, that's not what I want. Uh, I want to look at my... Is there really... There's not a hotkey for look at deck? Hmm. I guess the guys we have in our deck are not tremendously more relevant than the Gorilla Fighter. And the way the situation's looking right now, I'm a little leery of reducing the number of cards in that deck. Maybe I do want to scrap the Porcupine Prana, just like try to find um, any removal at all. But removal's not going to be effective against his creatures anyway. He has a guy with six power and two guys with robust. So yeah, I guess we're just going to pass. Okay, doing that instead of attacking makes me happy. That makes me less happy. That's a very powerful construct. But we have lethal right now, as long as he doesn't do anything to mess up our attack. Okay, cool. We get him. We get him and we get a blessing for our phalanx. Refresh effects are just, like, unbelievably powerful, the way the game rules work. Alright, got ourselves some rusters, but of course they'll all be wounded. Good guys, at least. And it's nice that we did net health on the Prophet. Obviously, it's uh, devastating <laughs> that we took as many wounds as we took, but what are you going to do? I want, I want to go over to the thing that says enter camp, please. Wait, 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 wait. Did it? <gasps> for some reason, for some reason, pressing right trigger there restores my mouse cursor. What is happening with this damn thing? I mean, I'll take it. I'm excited to have a mouse cursor again. <laughs> nope, and then that. What is, okay, can I use my mouse properly? Yes, okay. This is very strange. This is a very strange situation. Okay. I would love it if it would let me play with the mouse for the rest of the for the rest of the episode. That would be real fun. Uh, a dog-sized and heavily armored animal, feed the animal. Yay, a friend. Oh man, an unwounded wrenchable. What a what a good find. That's very helpful. All right, let's see if we can survive this. If we can, if we can get out of this without taking too, too much damage, we might be in an okay spot here. When a friendly follower is destroyed during the enemy's turn... Wow, that's going to happen a bunch. we got to make sure that we're clearing their board. And when a friendly follower is reduced to zero life points, remove... Once per turn, get a free man every turn that one of your guys dies. These effects are, are probably too powerful. Like... If that didn't have the cost reduction on it, it would still probably be too powerful. All right, let's um, let's pull the Union Sapper. If we're gonna play some early wounded guys, let's play like those dudes. They're pretty good actually, even when wounded. And then Devoted Guard. These will be my my early cards, and we still have good late cards. I'll pull a Scavenger Savant to replace it with the the wounded Rinchable or the non wounded Rinchable. And do we wanna do we wanna cut some cards out of our leader deck? I think I'm gonna go and go ahead and drop the secure. It's just it's it's a card that we almost always just scrap, and then that leaves us at 15 and we'll we'll stay there. 
God, I hope I get to use my mouse during this during this battle. Uh, yeah, let's keep all that. Nope, of course not. Can I at least... Okay, if I then use the stick to click somewhere... No, okay, clicking with my mouse... Okay, well, I guess we're doing the battle back on the controller. This... Sh it's gotta be some kind of issue with Windows, like, failing to... Like, thinking peripherals are getting unplugged and replugged in or something? The... The hot swapping, the hot plugging features in Windows 10 are less functional than they have been in previous versions of Windows, with with 8 accepted, because 8 was total, 8 was also total trash. Uh, a 5.3 is tough to deal with. We might have to just feed our stoic guy to that. Roaring John Wars. Uh, the way the game rules work, creatures that have low toughness are way better for your opponents than they are for you because of the fact that you need to maintain a deck over multiple encounters. Like, I don't think Roaring Genoir is actually that good of a guy on the whole, but he's a, he's a really good guy for your opponents and a mediocre to bad one for you. And there are a lot of cards that are like that. I think we may actually have to trade off our guy here. We can at least prevent him from taking a wound. I'd really like to get access to this thing, obviously. Because he's gonna he's going to have infinite cards in hand. I guess there's no there's no point in killing the Roaring Janwar because he just gets it back immediately. There's kinda no point in killing anything he plays. We just always attack his his 33 health? Jesus Christ. I mean, yeah, that's that's it. That's what we have to do. Do we play drone plus the like, like cutter plus challenge? We have to get him to kill his guys on his turn? Because that thing only activates during my turn, right? No, wait. The mob frenzy activates during my turn. This activates whenever. So there's actually no way to interact with it at all. We just he just has all of his guys forever. That's pretty bad. That's pretty bad for us. All right, let's um, let's play this Crash Jacker then. We're gonna have to maximize power on the table at all times, and he's gonna be one hundred percent in control of the pace of the game forever. So we need to, in order to, in order to win under those circumstances. That's just a long term play. That's not that's not really about right now. That's interesting, though. So if we put down Cutter with Challenge and Bolster, that can that can make the Janwar's life miserable. This is really not about making the Janwar's life miserable. This is about making my other guy survive. And then that means we can also play this Vandal and actually have a Vandal down. So we're representing a larger amount of power for next turn. Okay, Thunderblade's real bad news. <laughs> yep. What what a thing that you should definitely be allowed to do. Uh All of a sudden I can't even move the cursor with the controller. What is happening? Okay. All right, now the keyboard works, but the controller doesn't anymore. What? What is happening? How do you even do this with the keyboard? Okay. Yeah, my <laughs> my system has gone mad. Uh, boy, what do we what do we want to do? I'm having enough problems. I really don't need all this extra trouble. Okay, if we remove that guy from the board. You, you can't just remove a charge rage guy from the table and, like, put it back in his hand, though. Hmm. Because if we put that back in his hand, how, how do I... 
I just got in the hang of reading. Oh, uh, nope, that's definitely not what I want. Okay, that's a weird thing for the X key to do. I'm just trying to figure out what the button is that lets me. Here we go. F for some reason. I mean, probably because there's no reason for this thing to have keyboard controls, because <laughs> there's there's other methods that are better. So. If we put this back in his hand, he's just gonna play it next turn. Next turn he has enough energy to play the cheaper version of this plus the cheaper version of the Janwar, and this gets to kill something, so we have to just disregard it entirely. We have to completely ignore all of his cards and just go to his face over and over and over again. But we don't have the damage to do that realistically. Like, we can get there for five this turn, knock him all the way down to only 25 health, play a Crash Jacker, That guy will lose Blackout when he goes back to the opponent's hand, right? Cards that return to your hand lose all of their statuses. So it won't help us to do that. And the thing is, we can't even really go to the opponent's face right now, because we have to get rid of that Storm Signal. Otherwise, he's going to play his entire hand every turn, and then lose all the creatures in combat, get them all back, and play them all every turn. So I guess... Yeah, man, letting him play this guy over and over again is a real problem. Maybe we just black out the storm signal? And then go to go to his face for five, and just he gets to do whatever he wants with our guys during his turn, and we just have to be okay with that. Let's play a crash jacker and pass, right? He's just gonna kill this. So maybe we could instead play Devoted Guard and refresh somebody and then have that person attack him again. That doesn't feel like a good use of a refresh. If I had four armor, I'd feel more comfortable just like hitting him in the face with armored blow. It just sucks that there's no way to play this. Okay, what we could do with the Crash Jacker is play it. We'll play it behind this obstacle, where it will be safe-ish, and then we'll just dig it out of there somehow. I'm assuming that our Vandal is going to have the chance to die. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I think, um... I think between these opponent mechanics and uh, and our technical issues, my computer may be telling me that maybe it's maybe this would be a good time for our recording day to end. Uh, I guess challenge is pretty good for us actually. That effect is grayed out, so this is a good time for mind sees. This is maybe a, never going to be a better time for mind sees. Actually, it's kind of it's kind of great. It's a little bit of a shame that it's going to kill our Vandal and we're going to get nothing out of that, but... I mean, what we get out of that is that it blows up the, um... Blows up all of the obstructions on our side of the field, which is cool. Okay, and then... Then we attack for six, obviously. Is it like attack for six and then refresh and trade for that guy? Since this effect is grayed out for the moment? I think it might be. Because otherwise we're never gonna be able to kill that dude. I guess I can I can scrap for No, I don't have anything that will solve the problem. I guess... No. No, we only have three energy left. I do not have anything that will solve the problem. Yep, that's a shame, but I think that's the only way we're going to be able to get rid of this dude. And we have to get rid of him right now, so that the, uh, the warp back to hand effect doesn't apply on him, because uh, that guy has to go away, away. <laughs> okay. Ouch. 
It's a lot of damage. Archivist is going to give him Armored Blow. Nope, okay, he got Challenge. Don't think that's too bad for us. That's actually pretty good for us. We got real lucky there. So we play a Gorilla Fighter to kill his guy, to give him the guy back, which sucks. Or we don't do that, and instead play... Devoted Guard plus... Devoted Guard plus Explorer plus Resilience Chant. Get the Resilience Chant uh, uh, settled so that we can then use it for later. Devoted Guard trades for the dude, but trades for the dude during his turn so that the return guy to your hand effect will be grayed out during our next turn. Yeah, I think that's... That kills our Devoted Guard, but I think it might be necessary... I'm not sure if it was better to play the Resilience Chip. Well, okay. So is that... How bad is that for? That's pretty bad, right? And then he's going to be able to play the Archivist again, because it has its cost reduced. Hopefully he'll get Challenge again instead of Armored Blow, but we don't get to know that. Crash Janeer enables Crash Janeer enables Armored Blow, but I don't think we can actually do that here. If we play Gorilla Fighter now, the 4-3 is dead permanently. He doesn't have his effect up. But then I have a 2-2. Two -two. And like, what how does who does that help? <laughs> how, how does that solve my problems? Hmm. Probably it's reasonable to scrap challenge here, just looking for something, and that'll that'll feed a point of damage onto the shot. Can't believe I'm playing this game with my keyboard. We know that my mouse works. We found a way to switch control back to the mouse. It's just uh, I don't understand what's happening. Okay, Gorilla Fighter with a Porcupine Prana allows my Gorilla Fighter to live. That'll let us uh, get some damage done eventually. Let's try. Let's try that. So we cut that guy now. Stick the porcupine prana, and then we have a three damage shot plus an armored blow in our hand. We could try to make something work in the near future, hopefully. Like this is this is not a horrible situation. It's certainly not as good as the situation we ended our last turn with. Okay. So it'll let him kill the porcupine prana. That's pretty bad. Scavenger Savant is at least interesting. Flintheart Sign doesn't buy us any time at all because all of these guys are huge. He has 12 points of power right now, so if we don't kill a guy or play something with Taunt, he can just kill us. I could shoot his Archivist to return the Archivist to his hand, or sorry, shoot the Raider to return the Raider to his hand, trade my 2-2 for his Archivist, and then play Scavenger Savant and at least have a power advantage on the table. Although we all know that with him having four leader cards in his hand during next turn, he will resolve that. The problem is that with the AI's effects being so uh, so unbelievably powerful, like this this effect he has underneath him is more than a card of worth of power that he gets for absolute free every turn. So he doesn't have to spend a lot of cards on any turn to... Uh, to achieve effects, we are burning resources at an incredible rate. And not just in an in-game sense, but in a permanent campaign level sense as well. So we have a 5-5 with barrier. He's going to break the barrier. 
and kill it with his 5-4, but at least that costs two cards. I don't think I want to scrap. I think I actually like my cards. But man, we really need something to, something to break in our direction here. Okay, that's not great. We do know he has, like, very serious burn spells, so... It's actually pretty bad for us for him to just go to our face. Yep. He's on free dudes now. Okay, Stone Chakra into Crash Janeer gives us a... A 6-9 with Barrier and Taunt. He also gives us 5 armor, which is pretty relevant here. Alternatively, Crash Janeer into Armored Blow... Does some stuff. So crash to near armored blow and attack something with the 5 2. We have to be pretty careful about how we do this. So we could use the we could use the armored blow to kill the 1 2 and then eat the 5 2 with our 5 2 and I mean, that feels pretty bad, right? And then play Crash Janeer. Crash Janeer, because of the Sanctuary effect, will not have the power necessary to kill the 7-7. Seven seven, so we can't even achieve an even trade. Our opponent will have five leader cards next turn, because he'll get to replay the 1-2. But I think that's better than letting him replay any of these other creatures, right? Like, there's no, there's no way to beat this guy that isn't attrition, it looks like. I'm... So I'm not allowed to um, move up from here. I'm trying real hard. How do I look at the size of the number of cards remaining in the enemy's leader deck if I don't have a mouse cursor? How did I... Okay, hold on. Okay. I can right-click with the mouse at any time to get my cursor back, apparently. So he has five cards in that deck, five cards in this deck. So we can't wait him out. He's he's too far away from taking damage and he still has nine health or nineteen health. What about if we play the Crash Janeer Go to the opponent's face for five and then play Armored Blow on the opponent to drop him down to ten. Then we have Lethal on the board with two creatures who have barrier. This guy's this guy's dead to any two attacks, but it does cost two attacks. And we end up with So they have to go through the crash in here first anyway. Do I I don't still have my refresh, do I? No. I think that gets us closer to a victory than any plan that involves actually attacking creatures here. But it's extremely vulnerable to any kind of disruption. But I think I think every other plan loses regardless of how much disruption my opponent has. So I can't I can't manipulate anything on the board with my mouse cursor. I can have a mouse cursor whenever I want. I'm just not allowed to use it. All right, let's do this and then move the damn cursor around with the arrow keys, cause modern computing. They kill the Crash Janeer by attacking with the 1 2 and then the 7 7. The 7 7 doesn't even die. I think we lose no matter what. And we do have to play Crash Janeer. That's actually not optional. Because we have to. Well, if we played. What if we played Stone Chakra plus Rinchable plus Lintheart Sign? Does that give me a chance of having the Wrenchable survive to benefit from Flintheart Sign? No, because they, they kill it with their 7-7. Seven, seven. Their 7-7 seven, seven that we can't kill, and even if we could kill it, we wouldn't want to, because he would just get it back. <sighs> the barrier thing is actually killing us. Alright. Sorry, that's not how you do that. Uh, this. Then... This. Oh 
then the armored blow for four. The opponent's face. He attacks me with the one two, then the seven seven, which kills my six seven. Then he can go to my face for nine, which is non lethal, or he can use his other two guys to trade for my five two. But we can't win. We can't win any other way. The like literally the only way we do this is by okay that could be real bad. Okay, now he just has lethal. One two, then seven seven into the taunt guy, then attack my face with the other two creatures. Yeah, I'm not. We could play in a way that sacrifices he just made himself unable to win by playing a construct in front of his attacker for no reason like literally no benefit at all to that play unless he also has a like a push or a pull which he might because they are free yep okay just showing off he's like look at how many cards i have yeah if, it, if he had any um any amount of damage based removal we were dead there no matter what we did so him him having the wild shot made all of all of that planning wholly irrelevant well, this has been a nightmare. We could... If we play in a way where we're more willing to trade guys off in combat, uh, let people take wounds, let people get killed out of our deck entirely, we can make a little bit more forward progress on the ground, but it will guarantee that we can never actually win because we will not have enough resources to complete the later maps. We will not have enough people... We will not have enough um, things coming in from having people to complete events for us. Uh, I am more and more convinced that a significant portion of Doomed games are simply unwinnable. That you, you have to play very, very well on Doomed and you also have to get lucky repeatedly. And like, to be clear, we were only actually even in this one because we got lucky in the sense, not in the sense that like a random event went our way, but in the sense that the previous boss chose to lose the game when he could have done much better, right? He, he chose to play in a way that gave us a fast victory instead of choosing in the way that would grind us down and maybe even kill us right there in that fight. So I think, um, I don't think that that is necessarily a, like, a poorly designed experience. It's okay to have that be a difficulty level that exists in your game, as long as it's not the only difficulty level. Uh, but I think Doomed is maybe not. Maybe not super fun for me. That's not the thing that I want out of the game. Sadly, Burdened is a little bit on the easy side uh, at this point. We've, we've gotten to the point where, where I can I can win basically any Burdened game. Um, so I'm not really sure what we're going to do here. I'm going to go ahead and end the video. And I'm going to think about this. We might be done with, with uh, Nowhere Prophet, which is not to say that I am sick of the game or anything. I think this game is super cool in a whole lot of ways. But I think we may have hit a point where there's not a lot more video content to ring out of it. So, for now, assume that this is the end of the series. We might we might come back and do one or two more. I might try to... Um, I might play a little off-camera and try to get to the unlock events for... Um, some of the other classes and then just capture those on video so that there's a record of how to do those things in case somebody needs a record for how to do those things. Um, but yeah, like I said, this is probably it for Nowhere Profit uh, for us as, as far as a regular series goes. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope that I turned some people on to a game that they will really enjoy here. I think this is super cool. This is a really, really neat game. And honestly, I'm glad we didn't play it at release. I'm glad we waited so long so that we got to see it in a much more complete state. We got to see so many more uh, uh, classes and convoys. There's a lot of uh, re really cool stuff going on here. Come back next time tomorrow after I fix my computer for <laughs> for some other stuff. We're going to be showing off some new games on the channel. I'm excited about it. And we'll see you then.